Now for the more interesting part. We're going to allow the player to open this here closet. So we'll do that by adding a new object. It's going to be Sprite. We're going to name it Closet and we'll add an animation. And you can see that we have an image of the open closet here that we're going to drag on top of the background and try and position it neatly over where the closet is. I'm going to just see if I got it right. I think I got it, whoops, about right, yeah. So right now we're seeing an open closet. What we're going to do is the game is going to hide the closet. Initially when the player clicks on it, it's going to make this image visible of the closet being open. So we'll see that there's nothing inside, right? So in order for the game to remember the status of whether the closet is open or closed, we'll need to create a global variable. The way it works is when the player clicks on the closet, the variable will be set to one. And so the game will remember, yeah, the closet is supposed to be open. And even if we go um, and check out the other part of the room and then come back, the game will still remember that the closet is open. So we're going to go to the project manager and we're going to, under game settings, go to global variables and we're going to create a new variable and we'll call it closet open and we'll set the value to zero, which means no, it's not open to begin with. And we're going to go to room two events and create a sub event here and we'll test the variable. So under variables, we'll look for global variables, value of a global variable, closet is open. Is it equal to zero? Well, in that case, we're going to add an action and we're going to common actions visibility, hide the sprite called closet. Conversely, I'm going to copy and paste it. If closet open is set to one, we're going to double click and I'm changing the action to show. We're going to show the closet. Okay. I didn't actually have to do that because it's shown by default, but let's say better say than sorry. Okay. So we're going to also create a new clickable object on top of the closet. We could actually make the closet object itself clickable. That would also work, but I'm just going to be consistent with how we're using the clickable objects and I'm going to drag it over like so. And I'm going to move it to the click layer and I'm going to change the name to closet. You guessed it. Okay. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a sub condition here for what happens when the player clicks on an object, a clickable object called closet. Well, what happens is we're going to tell the player, first of all, that there is nothing inside. There is nothing inside the closet. But we're also going to show them proof. So we'll create a sub event and we're going to copy it here. If the closet is open, is not open, sorry, if it's equal to zero, well, then we're going to show the closet. So the opposite of what happens at the beginning of the scene, if we click on the closet, we're going to show it and we're going to change the variable closet open variables, global variables, value of a global variable, change the value of closet open to one. So you can see that if we test the scene now, we click on the closet, the closet is open. The game tells us there's nothing inside. And if we go back to the other room and then back again, we can see the closet is still open. One thing that doesn't happen here that happens in the other room is when we click on an object that is clickable and then we click elsewhere, the text message doesn't disappear. That's because we didn't copy the relevant bit of code from the other scene. So let's go uh, to room one and do that. So the code we're looking for when we're clicking on something that isn't clickable, well, then we hide the stuff. We just need to drag it out of the sub event space. 
and it should be working now. Closet, nothing inside it. Right, so we have some basic gameplay going on, which is neat. Um, we don't actually have a way out of the room yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a challenge for the player, um, and they're going to find a secret inside the room, as it happens in these types of games. Well, the secret is that behind this painting here, there is a safe. And guess where the code for the safe comes from? Well, is the number on this poster here. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the closet. We're going to create a separate hidden image that will show the player once they've clicked on the painting. And then they will see that, yes, behind the painting is a safe. And if they've checked out the post-it note, then the player character knows what is the code. And then inside of the thing, they can find the key that takes them out of the room. So this is our basic puzzle, one and only, okay? So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to go back to room two, and I'm going to create a new object, and it's going to be Sprite. The name of the Sprite is going to be Safe, and the animation is, where is it? Right here. So let's see if I can position it properly. Safe. I'm going to um, hide the click layer for now so that it doesn't distract me. And I'm going to try and position the thing so that it looks like it's in its place. This looks about right. Let's see, what about the, the wallpaper? Okay, a little bit to the left. I think it works. There might be a bit uh, of fine-tuning necessary. I can show the click layer again. So again, we're going to do the same thing for the safe. We're going to create a global variable uh, so that the game can remember whether the safe is open or not. So we're going to the project manager, game settings, global variables, and we're going to create one for the safe. Safe found. And actually, while we're at it, this one I'm setting to zero, um, let's add another global variable. Oopsie, didn't mean to do that. Another global variable called note scene. So that's how the game will know if the player has seen the post-it note. We'll actually add another one, just while uh, we're still here, called key found. So that's how the game will know whether the player has found the key or not. So this is what we need for our basic gameplay. So I'm going to click apply. None of the things have happened, hence all of them are equal to zero at the moment. So under room two events, we're going to, if, um, what was the code, safe found, is equal to zero. Then we're going to hide the safe. But then let's create another clickable object over where the painting is. We'll call it painting. And then if the player clicks the painting. Well, a lot of things I pasted here. Now that I meant to. Let me try that one more time. Okay, so if the player clicks on painting, we're going to change the... Actually, let's not change the text now. We're going to do it later. Um, if the Click on the painting and then safe found is zero. We're going to change safe found to one so that the game knows we've found a safe. 
going to show the safe accordingly. And we're going to change the text here. I'm going to drag and drop this from here to here. I'm going to uh, change the text to. Oh wow! There is a safe in the wall. Right. The other condition we want to add here is that the player hasn't found the code for the safe. So we're going to copy and paste this and change it to note scene. And maybe we're going to add another condition here. Uh, not a condition, we'll add some more text here so that the player says, too bad, I don't know the combination. Okay, so let's see what happens if we test the, the room. We can, we forgot to move the clickable thing to the click layer. Um, so let us do that, first of all. Moreover, we forgot to edit the variables here. I thought I did, but something went wrong there. So let's try again. We're going to test for the global variable. If safe is found, maybe I undid too many things. If safe is found, is zero. Then we're going to show not show, we need to hide the safe. Okay, so it works now. Right. If we, let's duplicate the subcondition here. If the safe has been found, but the node has not been seen, then the player just says, I don't know the combination, reminding us that we need to look for the number somewhere. Um, now we're going to go back to room one, and we're going to actually make it possible for the game to remember that the player has seen the post-it. Okay, so we're going to add an action here. And we're going to variables, global variables, change the value of a global variable. The variable we're looking at is no scene. We're going to set it to one. Okay. Right. And then we're going back. Let's actually fix the, the numbers wrong, as I now remember. Let's see what the number is, it's supposed to be 7823. So let's change it in the text as well. 7823. Okay. Right. So we're going to create another event. And that one is going to be if the safe is found and the note has been seen. So we're setting note seen to one. Then yeah, we don't need to continue showing the safe um, and setting the variable because it's already one. Then we're going to say um, oh look, there is a key inside the safe. And we're going to add another action. We're going to create a global variable. We set the global variable key found equal one. There we are. Um, and we're also going to show the actual key. So the same thing we did for the post-it note, we will zoom in more closely on the object that is of interest. So we're going to um, find the item object here. We're going to edit the object and we're going to add another animation. And the animation is this image of the key. Right, so when the player has found the safe, has seen the notes, they click on the safe, we're going to add action, sprite, animations, change the animation of item to two. Right, so let's 
So this should be functional. I don't know the combination. What if we go back? We find the number. We go back. Oh, look, there's a key inside. One thing that's obvious to me now is we forgot to um, change the point of origin for the object so it's not positioned in the middle. We're going to change that. But other than that, it seems to work. So two more things we need to do in order for the game to be finishable. We're going to have to create a new condition for the door so that it can be opened if you have the key. And we're going to create a victory screen that the player will see if they open the door. Uh, both of these things we're going to do after we've set the origin point for the key. So I'm selecting the item. Um, I will click on edit points. I'm looking at the second animation. And again, I'm dragging the little red cursor here to around where the middle is, and I'm going to click Apply. Now, one other thing we're going to do is... Um, yes, what bothers me is when we play the game right now, and we click on the painting, you immediately, right in your face, go, I don't know the combination. That happens because um, as soon as we've clicked on Painting, the game sees that uh, the safe has not been found, and it say, uh, says the safe found variable to 1, which immediately triggers the next condition after it. So safe is found is now 1, node is still 0. Um, and then the, the, the text is immediately changed from, oh wow, there's a safe in the wall, to I don't know the combination. The easiest way to prevent that is to drag this over here so that the game tests for this condition first, then it tests for this condition, so this one should be able to fix it. Oh yes, there's a safe in the wall. If you click again, then it goes, I don't know the combination. Good. So the two remaining things to add are, we're going back to room one. We're going to look at room one events. And we're going to um, look at door. And we are going to create a new sub um, event here, and that's going to check for the variable, the value of a global variable, key found, and if it happens to be 1, then we're going to change the text to the key fits. I unlock the door. Okay. And we're going to also set key found to 2. And the reason for that is we want the game to display this message, I unlock the door. And then if the player clicks on the door again, then they open the door and go out. So we don't want the click to just teleport the player to victory because then we get no feedback for, from the game as to what happened. So we're going to use that same variable key found to remember whether um, the lock is still locked or not, the door is still locked. So two means that you've not only found the key, but have also opened the door. And now we're going to um, create another sub-event for door. The variable we're going to set to Two, not and the variable we're looking for is oh sorry I, w I I chose the wrong condition here it's not scene variable it's a global variable the value of um, key found if it's equal to two then we go to scene change the scene and the scene we're taking the player to is called victory we don't have that one yet we'll have to create it and the other thing is again because we don't want the second condition to be triggered immediately after the first one, so the game will set uh, key found to 2, immediately test for this condition, and we'll take us to the new scene. We'll just drag it over here so that the condition testing for whether key found is 2 is actually above the other condition. So that will help us show things um, one thing at a time. 
So let's go to the project manager again and create a new scene. I'm going to call that one um, victory because that was what I typed into the event sheet here. And I'm going to also open that scene and add a new object and it's going to be a sprite, call it win, add an animation and we're going to, I think congrats is the, the file we're looking for. Let's drag it here. Gonna change the coordinates manually like so. And let's test our game starting from the menu. So, new game. Click on stuff. The door is locked. Now we're seeing the post-it note. If we open the drawers, they're empty. If we open the closet, nothing inside. Player isn't sleepy. Nothing happens. That is interesting. It's actually not that interesting because um, I realize now we don't have a condition for what happens when the note has been seen, but the safe hasn't been found. So we're going to just copy and paste the same condition here. And we are going to change note scene to one. And we're going to change the line to just, oh, look, there's a safe in the wall. Because we actually do the com know the combination now, but it will take the player another click to learn what the combination is, right? To enter the combination. Let's try this one more time from room one. Go in here. Actually, let's look at the post-it. Yep. There's a key inside the safe. The key fits, we unlock the door. And congratulations, we won. So we have the basic prototype of the game ready. It still still needs a little bit of fine tuning, but we're going to get to that in the next video.